Hello and welcome once again to Workshop 1138. I'm Robin and today I'm going to be looking at servo motors. Now inside every 1985 Worlds of Wonder Teddy Ruxpin you'll end up with something like this. So you might be familiar with this from some of my other videos but here we have a, a dismantled head. I've re-routed these wires so they'd normally go through the neck but just for ease of demonstration I've put them so we can easily see where everything goes. Um, so we've got servo motors within the head, each controlling the eyes, top jaw, bottom jaw and these are connected through by wires down to these connectors here and we've got servo motor controller ICs on board which are these little silver coloured things. Now the main purpose of this video today is to have a look at the modes of failure that we might get with um, servo motors of certainly of this age. Um, it's not uncommon for um, a Teddy Ruxpin to be sort of working fine one minute and sort of the next there is a there is a problem where one of the, the mouth parts or the eyes has stopped moving um, the tape's still running and everything else is working fine but one of them seems to have jammed um, in a position and you've seen in the other videos uh, probably by now that there are ways of mechanically uh, sort of coercing these back into movement. Uh, what I'm going to be looking at today is uh, if there's anything that can be done electrically to do that so we don't have to open up the bear um, uh, uh, in order to get access to these or we don't have to do the the thing of sort of manipulating these things from the front which I'm, I'm sure sooner or later they're going to put stress on some of these plastic parts and eventually it's going to get damaged. So let's just run through quickly how uh, Teddy Ruxpin works. We've got of course the compact cassette um, with, on which his um, stories have been recorded. Uh, it's a stereo recording. Uh, the left hand channel is used for uh, the audio that you'll hear out of the main speakers, so that's the sort of stories and songs. Uh, the right hand channel uh, has got encoded in it uh, a bunch of control information. Now this is uh, lots and lots of series of nine pulses and the gaps between these various pulses uh, are measured by the circuitry in here and used to decide the positions of various servos. Um, some of these um, pulse widths are used to control the eyes, top jaw, bottom jaw in Teddy. Uh, there's another one that's used to control the audio mix between uh, Teddy and Grubby and whose uh, speaker is the audio going to come out of. Um, and there's also three more channels used for um, Grubby's eyes, um, top jaw and bottom jaw as well. So here I'm looking at the control signal going into one of Teddy's servos, uh, telling it the position that the bottom jaw should be aiming for. And what you'll see is that this pulse width changes whenever Teddy opens or closes that bottom jaw. So if you have a look at the reading on the voltmeter, this is the voltage that's being applied to the top jaw motor. And you'll notice as Teddy's speaking, it uh, rapidly switches between being uh, a positive number and a negative number because this motor of course can be driven in both directions. And if you've seen part two of my Teddy Ruxpin refurb videos, uh, you may have seen this servo before. This was the top jaw servo uh, used in that Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, this was eventually replaced. And when I first um, get it to move, you may have heard this characteristic click as it started to move. Um, I think this actually, the, the thing of me trying to manually manipulate this has actually damaged it and now this thing is, the cogs are slipping inside. So I think this is now a bit of a wreck. That's not spinning any of the cogs inside as this one is. Now this one I've uh, removed the motor. Um, but for the anatomy of these things we've got a motor, we've got a reduction gear going on in here. Um, and then we've got this shaft which has got this rubber wheel on and the actual positions that this can move to is restricted so 
there's a physical end stop at both ends. Uh, we've got a carbon track uh, sort of variable resistor arrangement in the back which is used to sense the position. So we've got this thing which presses on this thing. Um, so carbon track, we've got these little metal prongs which are sticking up. So what we've got is a, a voltage of about 5 volts. I think the 0 volts is on that pin, 5 volts is on that pin. Um, and the, this wire returns uh, the position that's sensed. And in order for all this to work and work properly, uh, there's a couple of places where we need a good contact. So if you're seeing here, this is actually quite dirty. And we're going to get some sort of wear and corrosion going on here, particularly after 30 years. You can see that the, uh, there's some wear on the carbon track. This one's never been opened um, and it could probably benefit from a clean. Um, but if the voltage that's picked up from this little, this little thing here that's pressing on the carbon track uh, doesn't get through, um, we've then got a problem because the servo uh, motor controller is going to be sensing that it's at, at a different position to where the thing physically is. Um, now if either of these aren't making proper contact with there, which does actually look quite dirty, um, or that's not making contact properly with there, then we're not going to get the correct voltage or perhaps any voltage uh, transferred back down this lead. Now, I think this is a very likely mode of failure for these things, uh, particularly being as corrosion can, can sort of creep in over the years when the thing's not being used. Let's take a look at what happens if we try and simulate this fault. So I'm taking the connector for the top jaw servo off and I'm going to it's actually a blue lead on this one as the one I was demonstrating on it was a red lead uh, they have a slightly different color scheme there we go so I've now freed up that blue wire and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently poke that back in without clipping it in uh, hopefully if I switch this back on so that's Teddy's jaw working if I remove this wire all of a sudden, Teddy's jaw just jumps to uh, wide open. So I've put the wire back in. You can see it's closed up again. And watch the little pink stripe that's on there at the point where I remove the wire. Removing the wire now, it just drives to one end. And that is now stuck in a position and if I get this voltmeter out and get it in a position where we can see we can see there there's a voltage on the meter and that motor is being permanently driven so what's happening now is the the servo controller I see uh, is sensing, well it's actually not sensing the correct position, it's sensing um, some other position. It's deciding the motor is hugely out of position because the uh, because it doesn't know any better um, and now it's trying to drive the motor in a particular direction to try, try and, and achieve an adjustment that should put it back in the right position. Um, and it's one of these old things, it's garbage information in, garbage information out. So that motor is being permanently driven and that's not a good thing. Um, if I can find that wire again and reinsert it. Now if dirt got on there and prevented the signal getting through and forced the motor to drive to one end, why would the act of 
trying to drive the motor yourself or give the, give the motor a bit of a wiggle uh, suddenly fix that. Well if there is dirt on there um, and that's blocking the signal and the motor is driven to one end and that dirt is still on there we are now in, a, in that stuck state. Um, that dirt is not going to move by itself but if you of course have grabbed this thing and started to move it left and right um, there's a fair chance that whatever dirt is getting in the way will have been brushed to one side uh, it might be temporary uh, or it might be permanent but uh, that seems to clear the fault and then these uh, things will carry on working for some length of time um, and with the possibility that it could happen again and one of the reasons I've been investigating this at all um, is that the bear I gave as a present on Christmas Day, um, the one that's shown in parts one and two of the refurb videos, um, actually developed the fault of a stuck servo after playing its second story. Um, this was a little bit, uh, a little bit depressing as I'm sitting there on Christmas Day opening the thing up. Um, I'm thinking that it's going to be a worry now from this point on to the person I gave it to. So what I decided to do is find another way around this. So I'm going to assume that the fault that we're seeing here when I disconnect the wire or simulate by disconnecting the wire is the fault that we're trying to fix. So what I'd electrically like to do is to put in something that would then fool this circuit so instead of driving to one end and staying there um, it would then fool the circuit into thinking oh I'm actually out of position in the opposite direction and then it would try and drive the motor itself and hopefully that would then clear any dirt or debris that just happens to be on those contacts. So now for a close-up that's the wire from the servo that gives it the position information uh, that's disconnected from this connector so you'll see there's a, there's a vacant slot there because that blue wire has been taken out uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to connect this resistor in this case it just happens to be a 39 kilo ohm resistor because it's something I sort of had handy and lying about uh, to the second and third which so that's where the blue one and the yellow one uh, originally from and hopefully what we should see is that this servo will then move to a different position and this is a little bit tricky to get a contact so I'm trying to push it in now there we go the servo just drove to a different position and as I remove it it drives back so my fix, so fix for this I'll try and get that in again is that we just introduce quite a weak resistor um, the sort of sense for the position here is a is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor so 39 kilo ohm is very very small uh, in respect to that so even with the resistor in place we're not going to damage anything or try and drive the the thing to a position that's that it wouldn't naturally be driven to um, it's going to have a very small influence when the signal is actually there but when the signal is out like this it has a, a large enough influence that we can then hopefully move the servo and clear any dirt or debris that just happened please make contact there we go uh, happened to be on that carbon track of course taking the back off the bear in order to uh, poke a resistor in a few holes is uh, is a little bit easier than taking the uh, the head apart in order to sort of manipulate these motors um, but I think there's an easier method still if we just make a little circuit board with uh, a few of these resistors and a few switches um, and we have maybe one switch for each servo circuit um, we can have a situation where um, maybe it's hidden inside the battery compartment and we just flip the thing open and in the event of a stuck servo we just press one of the buttons a few times and hopefully by that time the servo's moved enough that any dirt that happens to be there um, happens to have got cleared and we're no longer in a circumstance where we've got a stuck servo. So I'm now looking inside the back of the bear that was used for the refurbishment videos. Those are the three servo connections. Um, 
wound the second and third pins along on each of these connectors is where I'm going to be connecting my little button board. Um, there's a hole in the plastic, we can see there where this blue wire goes in. The other side of that actually goes into the battery compartment. So I'm going to pass the wires on this board through there and then I'm going to solder them onto these pins here. I've tacked the board in place with hot melt glue. I've also shortened the wires so that I can solder them to roughly that position without having too much extra. I've just checked through with a digital voltmeter that I haven't accidentally shorted anything. I'm now going to secure these ends uh, with hot melt glue just to make sure that the wires don't move when I put the case back together. Not the neatest job ever, but it should be enough to hold everything in place. And I've had to reroute these wires because of the closure of the cassette door. And at this point I'd love to be able to tell you that that little switchboard has successfully cured a stuck servo, but I can't. And the reason is that the bear that that was fitted to about six weeks ago hasn't had a stuck servo. So as of yet, it's still unproven. Never mind. Anyway, if you like the video, um, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Teddy Rockspin videos that are coming soon. And this is Robin from Workshop 1138 signing off for now. Thanks for watching.